takes on a bigger than life proportion. Everything. And that includes their football. To Texans, the game is life itself. And when Longhorns and Aggies meet, it breeds feelings that burn deep, that smolder across generations, because for player and fan alike, this one's full of all the elements of what it is to be a Texan. Enthusiasm, passion, drive, and tradition. This is a game that is the very essence of Texas football. One of the great traditions on the 40 acres here in Austin is that when the Texas football team is victorious, the famed Texas Tower will burn orange until first light the next morning. Head coach John Makovic is hoping that thing is bathed in orange until early on Friday. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Well, for the Horns, if they win tonight, it is victory number seven, and that would mean a bowl game for them. But for the Texas Aggies, they're 11-0. No Aggie team has ever gone 12-0 in the history of the school. Still very much in a national championship picture for them. And for the two of them, well, this is the essence of Texas football. We are always focused toward Texas. Texas is the biggest game of the year. They're our rivals. You know, I've been doing this game since I was two or three years, two or three years old, and it's just an enemy, enemy game. Again, it goes back to bragging rights for the whole year. Regardless of, you know, we can win zero games the whole year, but if we beat them, and I think they feel the same way, you know, if there's one team you really want to beat on your schedule. As far as football goes, there's absolutely nothing but hatred between uh, myself and the University of Texas. I think we hate them and they hate us. That's just the way it's always been. That's the way it's always going to be. The Texas meeting room where Texas plans to stop Texas A&M's national title hopes tonight. For Texas A&M, Greg Hill, the tailback, will be the key player in their ball control offense. It will be important for Texas A&M to get into the fourth quarter with Greg Hill and Rodney Thomas as backup tailback and try to wear down the Texas defense. On the other side of the ball, Peter Gardier on last year's first play threw this interception to Marcus Buckley, which set the tempo of the game. Peter Gardier needs to have the game of his life tonight to beat Texas A&M. His keys, control the ball, keep it away from AM's offense. Two, protect the ball, no turnovers. Three, blitz opportunities. Last year, the blitz hurt Peter Gardier. Tonight, Peter Gardier hurts the blitz with big plays. Well, Coach, Peter Gardier better beware. I mean, he better look out for linebacker Marcus Buckley. Now, granted, he's going to get double teamed, but the AM coaches figure they found a way to turn him loose. If so, you're going to see one of the best linebackers in college football. Up for the Butkus Award, he could be as good as the old Bears linebacker himself. Now, tonight, across the field, behind the Texas bench, Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Adrian. Although Texas is known as the Lone Star State, that's what's been missing from the Longhorn offense the past few weeks. The big play player. But they may have found a solution. In true freshman wide receiver Mike Adams, he's done it all. He scored on a punt return, a pass reception, and even running the ball. And if he can duplicate just one of those tonight, he could be the Lone Star that leads the Longhorns to victory. of college football is being brought to you by Bud Drive. For a beer that's refreshingly different, try Bud Drive. And by Little Caesars Pizza Pizza, where you always get two great pizzas for one low price. What you're looking at is Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, something that has been an extremely difficult ticket for this entire football season. Because it really doesn't matter what the records are, although both have good records coming into this. The Aggies, great at 11-0. This is one that, that the two sides will come to see, Mike Godfrey, whether it's here or in College Station. R.C. Slocum, his fourth year, and what a job he has done there. 38 wins, nine losses, and only one tie. Over 80% his winning percentage. His ball club headed to the Cotton Bowl. And on the other side, in his first... Texas A&M encounter. John McAvoy, six and four, as the first-year head coach here on the 40 Acres. Series history: the 99th meeting. A&M won seven of the last eight. Texas 49 and one at home. 
A&M. Last Southwest Conference loss was right here in Austin. That was two years ago, 1990. You look at the two deep men for Texas A&M. Mitchell and Mickens, the two deep guys. Shreddy has it teed at the 35 in this 99th meeting between these two schools in the Lone Star State. About to be underway. Mickens from the three. Mickens all the way out across the 30 to the 33 yard line. And now the McDonald's starting lineups tonight for the Aggies on offense. A freshman right out of high school in Deer Park, Corey Pullock. Three and a half games he has been playing, and he has given the Aggies a new dimension. The wide receiver who's normally the big play guy, Tony Harrison, has a gimpy left ankle. We'll keep a close eye on him tonight. And up front, John Ellisor is the guy that leads that consistent Texas A&M offensive line. He's from Kingwood, Texas. First down, takes it across the 35. And now let's meet the starters on defense for the Texas Longhorns in their customary 4-3. And of the down four, Bo Robinson, a senior out of Bremont, Texas. He is the leader of that defensive front seven. The linebackers in the middle went for Tubbs. They converted him from a fullback, and he's really found a home in the middle, a very good one. And one of the best cover guys, say the coaches in the country, Brady Cavanis. He likes to play bump and run. Number 21, he is out of Sugarland, Texas. from the backside, rock the set at the 26-yard line. Norman Watkins. Ron, the electricity's in the air tonight for an upset. Crowds into the game, the Texas defense. Corey pulling the freshman quarterback. They're trying to give him a lot of looks. They figure he's still a freshman, will make some mistakes. Norman Watkins with the sack. Mike Watkins is a youngster that we did not see in that opening telecast against Mississippi State. He had injured a knee. Uh, him, along with uh, Bo Robinson, have given Texas a good tandem on the outside for pressuring the quarterback. Third down, the line to make is the 43. Pulling wants a timeout, so let's take it with him. 13-28 left in this opening quarter. We'll be right back. The freshman quarterback out of Deer Park. This time last year playing high school football and tonight close to 83,000. Little different environment, Mike. A little different defense he's facing, too. Bullock from the shotgun. Steps up into the pocket. He can run. Gets out on the wing and he is down at the 34-yard line. Todd Hunt defensively for the Longhorn. Texas wants to make him make decisions. You see a lot of line movement, a lot of movement in the secondary. They're going to give Corey Pulling number four, just a ton of looks tonight. David Davis, the putter. 44.3. He will be kicking away to Mike Adams, the young freshman from Arlington we talked about. And as Dr. Jerry Punch said, he is a very good one. As you look at the coverage from the end zone, lazy spiral is going to let it bounce. And elects not to pick it up at the 24-yard line. So let's meet the starters on offense for the Texas Longhorns tonight. He's a senior out of Houston Lee High School, and he needs to have a good ball game this evening to head out of here in regular season play to have a chance against the Aggies. The wide receivers, very good one. Mike Adams, also LaBelle Pinckney. Both are freshmen. And up front, the guy that is the glue of the offensive front, a senior from DeSoto, Texas, is Turk McDonald. You get a good look at number nine, Marcus Buckley. The senior out of Fort Worth, Eastern Hills. First pass won't be to him tonight. I tell you, Texas always wants to know where he is lined up. Pitch goes to Jackson. Going to be hit, and that's Buckley at the line of scrimmage, and he'll knock him down for a yard loss. 
Let's meet the Aggies as they start on defense tonight. The nose guard, Lance Tackleman. He plays at AM, but he's coming back home to play this one. He is from Austin Westwood High School. The linebackers, no need to say a bunch. He's as good as there is in the country. Marcus Buckley out of Fort Worth. And in the secondary, another one who is highly thought of by the pros is Patrick Bates. Very large free safety at 6'4, 225 pounds. And he's only a junior. Solid player, Ron. We're not going to get this off. So both teams have to call a timeout and burn one, partly because of emotion and the crowd and the early going in this one. Well, this is such an emotional game. We talked to John Makovic in his office the other day, and he talked about rival games, and it was interesting. He said the best rivalry he's ever been in, the one that physically hurt for the longest, was Arizona-Arizona State. I was in that rivalry, too, as an assistant for Tony Mason. John Makovic was an assistant for Jim Young. But I think after tonight, he'll feel a little bit differently about this Texas-Texas A&M rivalry also. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. In fact, we talked with, uh, with Coach Makovic yesterday about the feeling going into a, a first time game like this because he was quoted after the Oklahoma game saying people had tried to tell him but he had no idea what that walk down the tunnel into the Cotton Bowl against OU was like. You look at what is hundreds of photographers lining the sidelines. This thing gets coverage not only on the Lone Star State Mike but it looks like from newspapers all over the Southwest. Well, everything's set for Texas tonight. They're a senior football team. They have a senior quarterback. They have an opportunity to knock off the fourth-ranked team in the country. But Peter Gardier really has to be the trigger man tonight with good decisions. Sixteen touchdown passes, a Texas single-season record. Brown is the only setback this time on second down. It's Brown in motion. They throw the quick screen. Duke. And he will be hit and knocked back for a loss at the 20-yard line. Jesse Cox, a sophomore out of DeSoto, Texas, is the man who comes across and makes the hit. Well, if you watch the Alabama-Auburn game today, you saw a great defense in Alabama. Texas A&M's the same type of defense. Look how well they run. Number 31, Aaron Glenn's the first man there, but count the number of jerseys, white jerseys. Seven players in on that tackle. Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator. Shotgun formation, and Gardera in the keeper. He will take it out to the 29-yard line, and again, it's Cox who knocks him down, and the punting unit will come on for Texas. Ron, very important in this first punt, Texas long snap. AM looked at it before the game, and they timed it, and they may go after the punt. They feel like they have a chance to block a punt tonight. McClanahan standing back at the 15. This time they've got the return on it. It is a booming, good, good coverage kick. Frazier from the 24. Return to the open side of the field, and he gets knocked down after a 46-yard punt. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of college football is being brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. And by Cross Fine Writing Instruments, the perfect gift for everyone on your list. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. Both teams now have had one offensive possession, and neither team has been able to do anything. So let's see if the, the body punches have been thrown, and now some of those butterflies are gone. Hill to the right side. They'll have one, maybe two, and it looks like 73 Shane Rink, who is a freshman out of Houston, Texas, hanging onto his ankle. University of Texas will assign eight people, these eight players, to try to stop the run. This is a man coverage situation, man coverage, and a free safety in the middle, but they're committing eight people to stopping the run versus Texas A&M. Texas shifting at the last moment as the pitch comes. Going to be hit and knocked down in the backfield, and it's Norman Watkins, number one, who leads the attack again. Shane Rink also helping out. Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator, strategy is very simple. 
crowd the line of scrimmage as you see Leon Fuller with eight people and make Corey Pulley and the receivers beat him on the outside man to man. Mike, first down in this ball game. It's going to be extremely important for both clubs, isn't it? It's a sword fight right now. They're fueling each other out. With protection over the middle, has it to his fullback, Doug Carter, and he will be stopped short of the first down at the 30. The important thing for Texas defensively is to get some momentum. Their offense has, well, should have some good field position for John Makovic on this series. Davis to punt again, and I have a feeling that possibly the special teams coaches might tell Davis this time, come up and catch the football. Don't let it hit the ground. Adams. And there's Kevin after him. Line drive kick, and Adams will let this one bound at the 35-yard line and just run away from it. Well, be sure to be with ESPN for Heisman Saturday. ESPN's college football coverage kicks off with college game day at 11.30 Eastern time, then at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific. It is Garrison Hurst taking his shot at the Heisman as Georgia plays host to Georgia to get you updated on all the day's action. Then at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, Gino Toretta and Marshall Falk go head-to-head -head as the number one ranked Miami Hurricanes travel to San Diego State. All of that on Saturday. Right here on ESPN. Michael, that's where we will be. And it might be a little warmer than it is here in Austin. Short drop to throw. Looking pass. Incomplete. Duke was the intended receiver. And Dr. Jerry Punch, what do you have for us? Talking about Marshall Falk's injury last Saturday, Ron, you know, he injured his right knee, the posterior collateral ligament. Did not practice Monday or Tuesday. I talked to Brian Berry, the head trainer at San Diego State a little while ago. He told me that he ran some last night. In fact, Marshall put shoulder pads on this morning and ran about eight or nine plays with the team. Still questionable, though, for Saturday night. Back up there. Okay, Doc. Thank you very much. Jerry Punch on the sideline. He's on the Texas side. Adrian is on the A&M side. This running play to the 40-yard line with Phil Brown, and it's Jesse Cox. We seem to have called his name a great deal already in this ball game. Jesse Cox with two tackles here early in the game on Phil Brown. Phil Brown, number 29, is the receiver that I look for Texas to go to tonight against the A&M defense because there's a lot of man coverage by Texas A&M, and you like to work your backs against those linebackers. Third down. Texas needs the 45-yard line to keep this drive alive. He just joined us. Eight minutes left. Opening quarter. No score. Little linebackers on the blitz, and they go with the counter. Brown will have the first down in the little delay. He'll come across the 46 to the 47. Michael Hendricks, well, the Bob, strong safety, is there. Excuse, excuse me. me, Ron. Bob Davy was guessing. He brought both linebackers up inside, and Texas came back with the tailback counter and caught both those linebackers in the wash inside. And that's why Phil Brown was able to get outside and pick up the first down. Good call by John Makovic. Boy, Mike, this, this A&M defense does run to the ball so well, don't they? You always look at the pursuit of the defense on how good they are. A&M runs very well. Gardier puts it up, got a man open, and dropped by Pinckney. Just off his fingertips, Lavelle Pinckney had a step on the corner. As soon as you start hurting the defense, running the football, then you get one-on-one -on -one coverage with Derek Frazier. Now, it's a little quick hitch, a little fake. Lavelle Pinckney on the takeoff, just a little bit too far. Derek Frazier just beaten on that play. Should have been a score. Peter Gardier just didn't loft it up high enough. Inside the 40 to the 39. Another youngster who is a freshman right out of high school. Jesse Cox defensively. And 
Adrian Carston. Let's get a report from you. Ron, I can tell you one of the reasons Texas was moving the ball so well early on here is because a lot of the motion just prior to the snap. A&M was getting caught having to make their defensive calls late just prior to the call. You saw it, Coach Godfrey pointed out with those two backers. Coach Dave just kind of guessing there. Texas really eating up a lot of yards here. That was a gain of 15 as you look at Buckley. Pressure is on, and he will be sacked back at the 48-yard line, Solari. Steve Solari, a junior out of Willow Ridge, just outside of Houston. They collapsed the pocket. Sam Adams, number 94. Steve Solari, number 94. Rather, Sam Adams, number 95. Watch him collapse the pocket. Peter Gardier back to pass. Now, here comes the pocket. Peter Gardier, he just becomes better in the system. Knows when to throw, when not to. Second down. back on the screen Brown 40 35 and down to the 33 again it's Jesse Cox who ran him down and that is we're told five individual tackles by Cox already in this first quarter well we talked about Ron speed and when you have speed on a defense how do you take care of speed there's going to be a fake here and then a screen Peter Gardier is going to roll out and throw back and that's how you take care of foot speed of a defense. Look at him run to the football. Now you set the screen up. Now you get good blocking. Jeff Boyd, number 58, pick up good yardage. Third down the pitch. Tries to cut it up inside, and Adrian Walker will be dropped at the line of scrimmage by Big Sam Adams, the sophomore out of Side Creek. 6'4", 282 pounds. When Sam Adams cranks it up, you're not going to see many better defensive linemen than number 95 of Texas A&M. Sam was the defensive player of the league in the Southwest Conference last year. Scott Ceretti will come on and attempt this field goal, and this one will be from 53 yards for the near hash mark. This would be one better than his best this year. So the Longhorns are on the scoreboard. And Ceretti with his best of the year, 53 yards. As you take one more look at it, it's the Longhorns three and the Aggies nothing. Let's take a break. Some of the almost capacity house here in Austin, Texas. If you take a look at a packed upper deck on the home field side and then back down in to the horseshoe. The scoring drive, nine plays, 31 yards, almost four minutes, four run, four pass. And they're now saying officially the ball had been moved back one yard or up closer. So it's ready with a 52 yarder. That ties and equals his longest this year. Reveille. This kick is rather short. Had to come down at the 13 yard line to Mitchell. And Mitchell hit by Malone as he crosses the 30 to the 32 yard line. Well, a special Friday coverage of ESPN's college football features the LSU Tigers and the Arkansas Razorbacks. A dangerous freshman tailback Robert Davis leads the team in rushing, including a 76 yarder against AM earlier this year. Kevin Harlan, Craig James, and Charlene Hawks will have the action for you tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on ESPN. Tubbs, number 44, the middle linebacker. Also, Kevin Watler, number 47, who plays the left outside linebacking position on the stop. Texas a and is going to have to challenge Texas on the outside or with some crossing routes versus man coverage to open up their running game. There's too many folks in there right now to block. I mentioned the fact that Harrison has had a problem with his ankle. Matthews and Mitchell are now in at wide receiver. Harrison is down to the bench. Play. The pitch back to Hill. Cuts it up. 
close to the first down. Ooh, you could hear the ooh from the crowd as he got stuck at the 41. It's Van Malone. You talk about a guessing game. When a team plays man coverage, a great play against man coverage is the option game because your receivers are running off the defensive backs. Texas on that play played zone coverage and guessed right versus the option. Third down. AM needs the 42 and a half yard line. Three to nothing. Farms on top. We are just under three and a half to play opening quarter. We go with the running play. Hill gets by the tackle. Thought he was going to be dropped for a five yard loss. But an outstanding back like Greg Hill, you don't arm tackle. And I believe with that effort, he picked up the first down. Well, they had a great defensive call again by Leon Fuller. They just didn't make the play. Corey Pulley, the freshman quarterback. Ron, I like the way R.C. Slocum and Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator, brought him along. They didn't start him at the beginning of the year. They could have used him earlier in the year, but they just waited till he's ready, and he's just added another dimension to this team. At first down is the initial first down of the evening for Texas a and Play action by Pulley. Under pressure. Gets it away. Incomplete. Nobody close. And that was Anthony Curl providing the pressure. And Adrian Carston, let's get another update from you. Well, Ron, yesterday Coach Slocum told me the last three and a half weeks, because he's been playing the last three and a half games, this has been a totally different offense just because of confidence level. The receivers tell me, you know, even when Granger was in there, when he was off, the ball was high, the ball was low. With Pulley in there, even when he's off, the ball is still inside of uh, hand distance here so they can very easily catch it. Receivers catching the ball better well. The back's running much better. Much more confidence with this young man in there. Great protection this time. Gets it over the middle, and it's dropped by his tight end, James McKeon. Wow, hitting right in the numbers. It's going to be a third down. Can you imagine the emotions going through Corey Pulling's mind and his head tonight? Freshman last year, as you mentioned, was playing high school football, threw for 1,890 yards, 21 touchdowns. He only threw 10 interceptions in high school. But the emotions tonight of playing against his arch rival, Texas. Look at the difference in offense since Bullock has come on. Third down. AM needs the Texas 47. Looking pass is caught. Hit immediately by Hunt at the 45 as Biggins coming right in traffic made the reception. Well, the Texas defense is just saying to Bob Toledo and R.C. Stoker, your freshman quarterback, Corey Pollock, is going to have to beat us tonight because we're going to man up on those wide receivers and try to stop you from running the football. David Davis, third kick tonight as he kicks away to Adams, and this is a beauty. Adams way over his head, and he's going to make the catch at the three. And will be knocked down as he crosses the 10 yard line. Mike, I'm not too sure that might not have been a freshman error there because he was so reluctant to come up and catch the last two. They were at around the 35. This one he caught at the five yard line. Well, you talked about they wanted him to catch the punt, but John Makovic will tell him that would have been a nice Willie Mays catch in a baseball field, but let this one go. Usually you have a 10 yard rule. He made that catch on the five yard line. You tell your punt receivers. Anything behind you when you're on the 10 yard line, you let go. Billy Mitchell is the man who made that uh, tackle. And Davis, why is he excited? That was a 53 yard punt. Horns lead it, 3 to nothing. Just over two minutes to play opening quarter. Over the middle. Brown out of the backfield. And he's close to the first down. However, they're going to spot him down at the 20 yard line. Well, we talked about Phil Brown being an excellent receiver. He is against the linebacker, number 29. Peter Gardier, you look at the protection, pretty good protection. Now you have a back, Phil Brown, who's a good receiver, against the linebacker, Jason Atkinson. Pretty good mismatch for Texas. Straight ahead with the fullback and the carry, and I don't think Brown's going to have it. He is knocked back at the 21-yard line. Marcus Buckley was the first man to make contact with him. Well, Marcus Buckley's all over the field, but Peter Gardier, and I know Gene Dahlquist, the offensive coordinator for Texas, they always want to know where Marcus Buckley is lined up. They'd like to run at him and not away from him as much because he's so fast to chase everything down. Flag 
Hodge are down, and Texas may have a free one. Adrian Walker to the outside. Knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Hendricks finally got him. Let's check the marker back at the 22. Thirty-five yards on the carry, and Joe Thomas says offside. Texas A&M. Ron, the benefit of a senior quarterback to make adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Peter Gardier with a check off here. Texas A&M with a little movement. Number 99, keeping Chatham. And then Peter Gardier with the pitch to Adrian Walker. But the veteran quarterback making the good decision on the checkoff. Gardier's pass knocked out at the line of scrimmage. And it's Chatham who jumped offside just a moment ago. And he says, "Here, I'm here to right myself after the, the wrong that I made on the offside. I was over at Texas A&M on Tuesday and talked to R.C. Slocum, and he told me, he said, I'm worried about Peter Gardier. If he gets hot, he's a kind of streaky quarterback, but if he gets hot, he can make things very difficult for us. And he was really concerned about his running ability. Bob Davies going to try to blitz a lot just to try to get him jumpy in the pocket. Texas single-season record as far as pass attempts by Gardier, 330. Going deep over the middle. There's Adams. Can't hold on. Aaron Glenn with the cover. Can't can't throw it any better than that. Aaron Glenn with a good defensive move. Michael Adams, number 83 on the post route. Aaron Glenn comes out of his back pedal, breaks on the football, and used that right hand to punch the football out. Junior college transfer from Navarro Junior College. Aaron Glenn. And a Southwest Conference record for pass deflections by him this year. Crawford comes into the backfield, number 37. Gardier's pass underthrown, looking for Duke, and it was Jesse Cox who put the pressure on. AM has been very solid on third down against Texas when Texas gets past the 50 yard line. McClanahan comes in to punt. 38 seconds left in this opening quarter from Austin, Texas. Three to nothing. Texas leads. Pooches this one very high. Going to go inside the 10 and will be down at the four yard line. 39 yards in the punt. Adrian Karsten. Last play on offense, Ron, was a pass to the tight end, McKeon, who is the replacement for Greg Short with a sprained right ankle. Now, if they have passing attack, their game plan tonight is to use a lot of that short stuff, 8 to 10 yards across the middle. Could be key for the AM and Aggies. Well, it could, Adrian, when you use a guy, or lose a guy, I should say, who is your leader in any category, and that's what Sharp is. In fact, Mike, we did that rehearsal game out in Anaheim when uh, AM played Stanford, and he caught the crucial touchdown pass in that one. Good Texas receiver. Air. Solid receiver. Straight ahead with the fullback, and Carter will take it across the 10 to around the 12 yard line. And could be the last play of this opening quarter. Late line movement by the Texas defensive front, just enough so that Corey Pulling, the freshman quarterback, has trouble audibling to change the play because of the line movement. Four seconds down to three, and that is the end of our first quarter. So let's take a break. The end of the first 15, Texas three, Texas A&M nothing. Nothing. Texas leads as we head into the second quarter. Aggies with a second down, and the line to make is the 17. an opening cut back against the grain and will be stopped at the 34 yard line when 
your nigh football team, the key block will come from your fullback, number 32, Doug Carter. On the linebacker, Winfred Tubbs. It springs Greg Hill. Fine Texas A&M tailback. Big yardage out to what, the 34 run? Yeah, and Hill now with seven carries for 35 yards. Hill again. Turns the corner, and he will be very close to the A&M first down as they will spot him out at the 44. Joey Ellis made the tackle, and it's Van Malone who is coming all the way back across the field to get his headgear. Just talked to play go about Doug Carter, number 32. You know, watch the block as he comes from the side to make the block on number 42, Anthony Curl, that springs Greg Hill again. Rodney Thomas comes in. Understand that Greg Hill was shaken up in that last play, so we'll get a report on him. He gets the handoff. Big opening in the middle over the 50, down to the 45, and is still fighting. Willie Mac Garza will make the stop at the 40-yard line. Well, that's the benefit of having two tailbacks that are equally strong at running the football. Rodney Thomas, a durable tailback as you look at the yardage that both tailbacks have accumulated this year 15 touchdowns for Greg Hill and 10 for Rodney Thomas Rodney Thomas maybe not the finesse runner that Hill is but boy he just showed right there he'll run right over you breaks off another tackle and is all the way down to the 30 yard line and now on successive plays Texas A&M eating up real estate at the average of almost 10 yards a carry or better. And let's go to Adrian Karsten. Just a stinger to Greg Hill, uh, Ron. Just kind of a burning sensation down the right side of your neck into your right shoulder. They're going to put him right back in there as soon as he's ready, which should be any moment. Ron, the key player in this drive for Texas A&M has been Doug Carter, 32. Good carry on the last... Uh, play for good yardage, but his blocking ability is what really is making both tailbacks, Greg Hill and Rodney Thomas, look good tonight. Well, I talked about the last four plays for Texas A&M as it is a first down. They stretch the change out. Runs of 22, 9, 17, and 10. Bob Toledo to the right of your screen, the offensive coordinator. San Francisco State is a quarterback out there. Thomas will take it just inside the 30. It's Van Malone defensively. Three to nothing. Texas leads. We have 13-20 left to play until halftime. Doug Carter, the fullbacks. Keep your eye on the eye fullback, Doug Carter. Good adjustment there, picking up the block on Bo Robertson as he was able to make that redirection just before the play uh, started. Thomas. Oh, what a lick. At the 20-yard line, it's Malone, and you could feel the concussion up here. Mike, we talked about first down back in the first quarter. And on this series right here for the Aggies, they have not made less than five yards, and that's been the difference. And the other thing that Texas A&M is doing on this series is putting the formation into the boundary. They're putting the two receivers into the short side. Texas, being a man coverage football team, will go into the boundary with them, which means the wide side of the field, you have a little bit more of a benefit of running the ball to. First and 10, Texas A&M. Ball just inside the 20-yard line. Here on the pitch. He will have close to five. Number 16, it's Lance Gunn, the senior from Houston, who comes up to make the tackle. Ron, here's what I'm talking about. Just a play before. When you're a man team and they put two receivers into the boundary, you're man coverage and against those two receivers. And then what Texas A&M's doing, they're running away from those two receivers to the wide side of the field where Texas is evened up against them man for man. So pretty good strategy by A&M. Looks came in the middle. They ran away 
from it. But a good open field tackle, and Van Malone is having his own kind of night. Just like we talked about uh, Jesse Cox for Texas A&M. Malone has been all over the place. See, here, here's what you got to look at is that's a free safety making that play on the line of scrimmage. Greg Hill, number 27, tackled by Van Malone, but that's a safety up there that fast. Ha they have no regard for the passing game right now. It's solely the safeties are playing run. Third down A&M. Do you throw right here, Mike, or do you keep be it on the ground? Be a great play action down. Wanted to throw, now pulls up, gets it complete. And that's McKeon, and they're going to give him the nine-yard line, and it looks as though that is enough for the first down, as Gunn made the tackle. I think he got the benefit of the spot there. See Bob Toledo as he sends the play in. Sends, there's the formation, both quarterbacks, one of them are live with the real play, and the formation went in with the uh, receiver. One live, one uh, is dummy. Not. That's right. Nine to one. Nine running plays, one pass of the strike. Thomas straight ahead as they had both tailbacks lined up that time. Hill and Thomas. Bo Robinson makes the tackle for the Longhorns. Imagine, Ron, when you talk about the two quarterbacks, they call home and say, Mom, I'm the dummy. I'm giving a dummy signal out there the other guy's live it's my job tonight everything's important everything's important to get the information on the field Harrison and Matthews up wide to the left and it's a draw play this is Thomas touchdown AM Michael I know a lot of people, and Greg Hill has done marvelous things at Texas A&M, but I think this is the youngster I've always thought was the better of the two running backs. He makes things happen when things aren't going as well. He's a strong running back. Another good block by Doug Carter, but just a nice drive by Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator with Texas A&M's offense. They like to play behind. When they get behind, they just seem to turn it on. Benetulius to attempt the extra point, and he knocks it home. And as we take a timeout, one more look at the touchdown run by Rodney Thomas. He takes it in. 7-3, Texas A&M. We'll be right back. The college football is being brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. And by Subway, your holiday party headquarters. 7-3, our new score with 10.05 left until halftime. This kick is going to go nine yards deep in the end zone. Adams will watch that sail over his head. Mike, here are the numbers at the end of the first quarter. Texas had 80 total yards. A&M had 26. But after that drive, it's now 119 Texas A&M and 80 for the Longhorns. So Dr. Jerry Punch, what do you have for us? Well, we talk about hook'em horns. How about hurting horns? Take a look at the Texas defense, how they have been banged up. Middle linebacker Winford Tubbs did not practice all week. He had a left knee injury the week of the SMU game. How about James Lane? A hamstring pull. His first practice yesterday. Stoney Clark hurt last week at Baylor. And Dominic Bustamante, their starting defensive tackle, out for at least two more weeks. So they are definitely hurting on the defensive side here in Longhorn Country. Ron? Ron, 19 of 24 plays for Texas A&M have been running plays, so they're trying to pound at that hurt defensive line. And that's one of those things that it's kind of like a boxing match. If you if you continue to go at it and you know you're hurting somebody, then you're you're not going to leave the well, are you? No, you're not. You're just going to keep doing what's been successful for you all year. And the running game of Texas A&M has really uh, the success they've achieved has been solely be by the running game. They haven't thrown the ball as well this year. John Makovic talks it over with Pete Garderas. The kick will come over. Offsides against the kicking team. So the Aggies will put it back at the 30-yard line. We've seen Peter Gardier earlier in the year, and we both commented how we feel like he's a better quarterback. He now really, in the first year of this system by John Makovic, he's grasping the system. He's better at it. He understands where to throw the football. And I just think he's emerged as a pretty good quarterback. 
has showed a lot more poise uh, this evening in this ball game. Line drive kick and will this one will go over Adams head so the horns will scrimmage from the 20 yard line. Speaking to Pete Gardier, his uh, Texas records in completions, attempts, passing yards, and also touchdowns, 37. And he also, Mike, distinguished himself this year uh, as becoming the first quarterback for either team to win in the OU series four times without defeat. No quarterback as long as that series is now 89 years old, I believe. went one way and the pass went the other so somebody was on the wrong page on that one. Oh when you have two freshman wide receivers you you think it would be the freshman wide receivers. LaBelle Pinckney's a 6'5", 222 pound freshman caught 71 passes last year at Anacosta High School but he was also an outstanding linebacker in high school. At that size you can see why. Turk McDonald the senior out of DeSoto Texas comes out over the football. Got a story to tell you about him momentarily. Short drop and the look in pass. Pinckney has it complete at the 25. Now it's going to be third and five. Well, Turk McDonald was born in El Paso, Texas. And he was born on Thanksgiving Day. And his father and his grandfather were sitting in the waiting room. And his grandfather said, you know, I can't believe this turkey is coming on this day. He said, you ought to name him that. And his father said, I won't name him turkey, but I will turk. And they were watching in the waiting room as the delivery was happening in a football game. And it was Texas and Texas A&M. And their nickname is Gobble Gobble, did he? <laughs> Turk McDonald. Crawford off the right side, close to the first down. And let's see where they mark it. Just across the 30. Jason Atkinson is the man who makes the tackle. You have to keep Texas A&M off, off guard defensively. And Keep them out of a rhythm. Go to the shotgun offense, then the handoff to Gerald Crawford, number 37. Just good, strong running to pick up that first down. Clock runs about to go under nine minutes in this opening hand. With all the running that we've had in this ball game, a very rapidly played game so far. Not even an hour old. Pumps it once, going to go up on top. Adams can't get there. Gene Dawkins said in our meeting with him that that's one of the things that Texas needs to do, and that is get the ball in the hands of number 83 because he is their game breaker. Well, you know, there's another play of guessing wrong. Texas was trying to throw the hitch and go, and it was well covered by Texas A&M, but the hitch was open. So it's just a guessing game, and uh, uh, that time Texas A&M won. Derek Frazier with the cover, the senior out of Sugarland Clements. Across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Steve Solari is there defensively for the Aggies. Keep your eye on Gerald, Ful Gerald Crawford, the fullback, right in front of 36. Adrian Walker with a key block to spring. Adrian Walker. Third down. And they need the ball just across the 40-yard line. Hits the Brown, hit in the backfield, and he will not have it. He's going to lose a yard in the play. That's Tackleman, the junior from here in Austin Westwood, who is there to make the stop. Kelly McClanahan awaits the snap back at the 21-yard line. Aggies with a 10-man rush at the line of scrimmage. Frazier for the fair catch and makes it at the 34. So let's go away for a moment. Wait a minute. A flag has gone down and will 
hold it right here and see what this is about. You can see Joe Thomas, the referee. He's at a Wilberton, Oklahoma. He's going to call a push against Texas. This is the last game that Joe would officiate. 40 years of officiating, and uh, tonight is his finale. And a fair swing, fair catch, five yard penalty. Defense. Oh, I think that's a bad call. I know Joe's retiring. He didn't make the call, but I think this is a bad call, too. So there's a timeout. Let's take a break. Well, take a timeout. 723 left until halftime. Well, you make the call here at home. I think this is a lousy call. Derek Frazier, number 23, with a fair catch signal. Going to bring the football in. Texas players stopping. Crawford, 37, a couple yards away. And look at this call. That's one will drive you crazy if you're coaching. <laughs> so the five yard stepped off against Crawford, and he has to sit on the bench and contemplate that for a bit. Aggies take over with good field position at the 40. Bo Robinson jumps across and makes contact. I believe Jason Matthews is who he's pointing at, saying that he came out of his stance. Procedure against the Aggies. Well, tonight's Army student of the game, a strong safety, Lance Gunn from the University of Texas. But our congratulations to Lance on his efforts as a student and leader, both on the field and also off. Lance named to one of the All-American teams this past week. Gross on the carry. And that's going to be a gain of maybe a couple. And now let's see, Mike. This is the first time in a long time that the Aggies don't have like a second down and four, second down and three, something like that. And we'll see how they play with the second down and long here. You might look for a reverse or a fake reverse where they pitch the ball and fake the reverse coming around. Some type of trick play here is a possibility. Gets the pass away to Gross. Oh, he gets wrecked. Ball is loose, and they're going to say incompleted pass. Willie Mack Garza comes up to make the hit. A senior out of Refurio, Texas. Corey Pulling looked like Eddie LeBaron on that play as he jumped in the air and threw the football. Roger Stallback. Anthony Curl on the blitz from the outside, 42. Watch Roger Stallback here. Up in the air, threw the football. Nice pass. Good man coverage technique by Willie Mack Garza for the incomplete pass. I say he looked just like Phil Rizzuto. 7 to 3, Aggies lead. Just under 7 to play until halftime. Lots of time for Pulling. Ball is zipped and it is dropped. Ryan Matthews, I believe, the ball was tipped just before it got to him. A, Watkins with the pressure. A guessing game again. Texas plays so much man coverage. But that time they dropped back in the zone defense. David Ron, Davis to punt. Ron, keep your eye on Daryl Red, the long snapper. He's the best in the country. Under a second, .60. Look how fast that gets back there. You can't block their punt. It's a line drive kick, and Adams on the return. Ooh, does he run into some trouble at the 28-yard line? 38 yards of the punt, five on the return. Let's take a break. Welcome back to Austin, Texas, Memorial Stadium. Second quarter, Texas A&M 7-3 over Texas. Ron Franklin with Mike Godfrey to Adrian Karsten and Dr. Jerry Punch. I'm glad to have you along. Hope it's been a wonderful Thanksgiving for you and your family. Hope you're settling back with your feet propped up and enjoying the football game as this Thanksgiving Day, 1992, comes to a close. This is a Thanksgiving Day affair in this state that... Uh, in long standing has come ahead of the turkey. The action and the pressure on Gardier spins away from one tackler and then he will be nailed by Jason Atkinson. Well, let's catch you up for those of you who didn't join us off the top of the telecast. First quarter, 
nine for 18 Texas A&M rushing yardage 11 86 yards in the second and uh, Shreddy 52 yard field goal for Texas Walker three rushes 41 yards for him The pass has a man wide open. Knocked out of bounds on the near sideline is McLemore. Gardeer waited and waited, and all of a sudden that receiver just burst open. Here's what Texas does a nice job of. Tom Landry, when you when he was coaching at the Dallas Cowboys, moved a lot of people around so that you really couldn't draw a gauge on what they were going to do. And the tight end moving over, he moved over for a specific reason on Buckley's side to just slow down his rush. Adrian Walker works to a hole, has five, has ten, fifteen, and cut it off at 18 yards. Bates with the tackle for the Aggies. Adrian Walker out of Piner Chapel Hill, hometown of Earl Campbell. It's a pretty fair back that uh, is from that hometown also. But Adrian Walker with just good quick steps and good quick moves behind the big offensive line of Texas. Good block by Alan Luther, number 65. And then you see the little quick darting moves by Adrian Walker. Patrick Bates with the tackle. blitz they come in the middle and Gardere will be gotten by Atkinson Atkinson was off like a shot just not enough folks to block that many people third sack by Texas A&M tonight Jason Atkinson number 43 is the key as you look at both linebackers the key blitz man for Texas A&M John Makovic told me the other day he's like their leader on defense and just seems to make plays. Then he played with Walker, and he will cut it inside the 45. Patrick Bates again defensively. And now the Longhorns with a third down, and they need the ball all the way inside the 28 to pick up the first down. We're about to go under four minutes till halftime. Seven to three, Texas A&M. John Makovic on that sideline is working every play because every play is so important against Bob Davies' defense because you're only going to get so many chances. They're so solid on defense. It's going to go to four receivers here. Deep over the middle. It is caught. Not enough for the first down, but Duke with the diving stab, but with the ring he might have put Texas with infield goal range. He already has one from 52. They're going to go for this fourth down, it looks like. Fourth down and about four to go, and they are. No kicking team. You have to wonder if they're going to try to get them to jump off sides and then send the special team team. Keep your eye on Michael Adams and Lavelle Pinkney, both outside receivers. On fourth down, the quick out pass has a man there, and Brown got turned around. Mickens with the pressure. Tried to get the ball to Phil Brown. Went to three wide receivers on this play and tried to get the ball to Phil Brown, number 29. Just got him turned the wrong way. Steve Soleri, number 94 in coverage. It looked like Solari just changed the direction of the ball just a bit. You could see the rotation turn or change, I should say, as, uh, as he got a hand on it. So the Aggies hold it's three minutes, 15 seconds until halftime. John Makovic had what he wanted, linebacker to running back. Bullard gets the pass complete. 
Gross out of the backfield, and the fullback will have 11 yards in the play. Garza on the stop for Texas. When you play man coverage, a lot of times the back coming out of the backfield is the toughest man to defend. Willie Mack Garza, a little bit late on making the tackle. This is the area of the field where you'd like to open it up for the freshman quarterback, to Bob Toledo. Pressure from the backside. Robinson has the pass. Is caught inside the 20. That's Brian Mitchell. This is where your quarterback grows up. You get a chance in one-on-one -on -one situation, man-to-man. -man. Joey Ellis, number 27. Corey Pulling, number four. Just gets enough on it and then gets hit, leveled by Norman Watkins. And there's the catch. A good adjustment to the football by Brian Mitchell, number 18. He's able to go up as Joey Ellis just keeps losing ground and fades away, he lost the receiver. So the line of scrimmage is now the 11-yard line. Two minutes, 52 seconds left until halftime. You have to think that the ball is going to be in the hands of the tailback on this play. Greg Hill. Hill with the handoff, takes it to the left side, and he will go inside the 10-yard line. Shane Rink is down at the bottom of that pile, redshirt freshman from Houston, number 73. You have enough time on the clock with 224 to run or throw the football. I would think play action pass here. Gets a block at the five-yard line, and Garza will finish him off there. And Garza has in play. He's coming straight to the sideline. Can't afford to lose Willie Mack Garza, number 17. Solid player in the secondary. Good run support. Good pass defender. Garza was also a running back in high school, besides being a defensive back and a very capable one. But he... Not very big, 5'9", 180 pounds from Refugio, it is pronounced. It is spelled R-E-F-U-G-I-O, Refugio, Texas. As you look at Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator for the Horns. On third down, they go with a reverse, and it's Thomas, and he'll walk in. Touchdown, Texas A&M. to attempt the extra point. He's got it, and as we go to break, let's take one more look at this touchdown by Rodney Thomas, the sophomore from Groton. Now wait a minute. 14 to 3, Texas A&M with just over a minute and a half until halftime. Bo Robinson, defensive end for the Longhorns. Getting the breather in the sideline as the Aggies stop a fourth down attempt by the Longhorns and they come back and convert it into another touchdown. Dr. Jerry Punch, what do you have for us? Guys, a loss the Longhorn defense can ill afford. Senior free safety Willie Mack Garza just a couple of plays ago. Take a look at his left ankle. His left ankle buckles and he gets rolled on. He hobbles off the field, came to the sideline. Specky Stevens, the head trainer in the staff, put him on a cart, have carried him to the locker room where they'll examine him. They also have x-ray equipment here. We'll give you an update from the locker room here momentarily. Thanks, Jerry. And, and uh, just as Mike had said, as you pointed out, uh, he is one of their seniors and a, and a leader in the secondary and one that uh, it's hard to replace. Yeah, 
Bear rolls the pocket. And he will slide down at the 22-yard line. Jesse Cox is there defensively. And John Makovic's offense with a minute and 20 to go, he is not settling to kill the clock. He wants to move the football down the field with a senior quarterback. So he's going to open it up. Screens, draws, throwing the football. Atkinson on the blitz up the middle. Gardner gets away from him and now just throws it deep and incomplete. Adams was the closest man to it. Jason Atkinson, number 43, with good pressure. The only problem when you throw the football like this, Ron, is it stops the clock. Right. You've got a minute and three seconds to go. Two timeouts left by Texas A&M, so they could get the football back in good field position. If Texas runs the football here, look for A&M to stop the clock. Texas needs the 30-yard line to keep this one alive. Linebackers coming on a blitz in the middle. This is Walker. Reverses it. Loses the football. Recovered by A&M. Jesse Cox, number 48. Adrian Walker, 36, had nowhere to run on the right side. Reverses his field. Just look at the point of the football is not covered, and the ball is just outside. Aaron Glenn, number 31, the junior college transfer from Navarro Junior College, strips him. Jesse Cox, 48 with the recovery, and now with 54 seconds to go in two timeouts, do you turn Corey Pulling loose? I think you do. I do, too. And that man right there knows that to beat an undefeated Texas A&M team, you got to play a near perfect ball game, and putting it on the ground inside your 30 is not playing a perfect game. Great Hill, he wants to throw, throwing back to his quarterback, and Texas Bo Robinson was out there to defend on the play. He was <laughs> didn't let Pulley go anywhere. Well, the only player who could have caught that's a tuba player over there in the Texas band because that was thrown so far out of bounds. Now we have a flag down back at the 35-yard line, and that's going to be an illegal grounding of the football call. Well, unless he was throwing it to Tommy Tuba, you know, that was his, that was the only eligible receiver. R.C. Slocum's a little upset. Offense, five yards, lost him down, second down. Going to be the pitch to Greg Hill, number 27. He's going to throw back to number four, Corey Pulling, and look where he throws it. <laughs> he did exactly what the coach told him. He said, if he's covered, you throw it in the second row in section 10. There's a track around this field. That was all the way to lane seven. Pass deep over the middle, incomplete. Overthrown. Boy, and I'll tell you, Cavanaugh came up and really put the lumber on Tony Harrison. Texas is going to have to put some points on the board to win this game. We all know that. But let's don't forget this drive now. This drive started on the 29-yard line. If Texas gets out of this, this could be a big play for them because they were really in dire straits. Now you have to figure that Corey Pulley's going to throw one to the end zone. Halftime blip. Pat dies last game, and Eddie Robinson gives thanks. All that and more. Coming up at halftime here on ESPN. Pulling all the time in the world, deep over the middle, has it complete, that's Mitchell. Brian Matthews, I beg your pardon, 81 rather than 18, and Lance Gunn makes the tackle. What made that play given by the offensive line of Texas A&M? And good movement by Corey Pulling. Great protection on this play, but Corey Pulling also buys some time the offensive line of Texas A&M as they lock on. Remember, we talked about the defensive front of Texas being hurt. Now Corey Pulling moves to the left side and really gets some zip on this pass to number 81, Ryan Matthews, to pick up the first down. That's also what a mobile quarterback will give you. 29 seconds left until halftime. Look at the difference as far as the first quarter and the second quarter. Let's 213 yards for A&M. The Longhorns uh, held to 53. 80 yards they had in the first quarter. Dominated the second quarter. And now with the ball. 
on the 18-yard line. You have to figure with 29 seconds, you got at least three, four passes where you throw the ball toward the end zone. You got a lot of time here. To be very patient on offense here. Good play selection. We got a good look a moment ago at 93 for Texas, who is Stoney Clark. He's a, a freshman, 6'1", 310 pounds out of Gladewater. They didn't know if he was going to be able to play because of uh, an injured knee, but they were hoping they could get about 15 plays out of him tonight so that Hunt uh, and Rink could be spelled a bit. First and ten. Backside pressure, looks for the end zone, overthrown. Anthony Curl is the man who was coming with the backside pressure, and Pullig has proven tonight that he can, can take a pretty good shot. He took one right there. Best compliment he got was from his teammates where they said he reminds them of Bucky Richardson, their successful quarterback last year who was with the Houston Oilers. Confidence. You see the confidence on his face? Your eye on Brian Mitchell, number 18. Safety blitz by Gunn. Still on his feet is pulling, and now will be dropped. Gunn is 6'3", 220, and he still couldn't knock him off his feet. And Gunn hit him a pretty good lick. Late blitz by Lance Gunn, the free safety, number 16, strong safety. As he moves up to the end of the line of scrimmage, and now he comes untouched. He's able to get to Corey pulling and just shake him enough and wait for the cavalry to come and make the tackle. That was the cavalry. That was <laughs> the cavalry. That was Tony Clark at 310 pounds who came in there and moved some more bodies around. Well, usually a 310 pounder can move the pile. So we have 12 seconds left until halftime, and the discussion going on in the A&M bench. Mike is to try to run one play and then get Benetulius in a position to uh, with the kicking team to, to come on. I think I would kick the field goal here with uh, with a freshman quarterback. Although I've been really impressed with the way he's playing right now. You have you definitely have time for one play, but you can't afford a sack and you can't afford somebody to make the catch and run unless he's going to get out of bounds. That's right, because with the 12 seconds, uh, you'll you'll burn it up. John Makovic, his first year as the head coach here on the 40 acres, coming down from Illinois. And let's go down to Adrian Carson quickly. Ron, 99% chance is going to be a fade pattern to the end zone, right side of the end zone. All right, we'll look for it. Thanks, Adrian. Puts it up, looking for Mitchell in the end zone, can't get it. That'll stop the clock with seven seconds. And look what had happened. Number three, Tony Harrison on the left side was down, jumping up and down. I don't know if Cavanish left him immediately, but Harrison thought he had gotten open. I think he was open, but it was just as Adrian was talking about the fade route against man coverage to the outside. Brian Mitchell versus Joey Ellis, number 27. 27 to 39. Venetulius on his career. This attempt of 42 yards. Good pass, plenty of distance, and he's good. Good call by AM. They took the shot for the end zone with the freshman quarterback, came up empty, but was close, and then still had time to kick the field goal. One more look at it as uh, Benetulius had plenty of leg on this one. He's got plenty to spare as this one clears. And Dave Davis, who is the punter, is his holder. And you can see their reaction. 17 to 3. They move out to a 14-point ball. And again, coming up at halftime. The halftime blitz. Also, we'll take a look at Auburn and Alabama. Pat Dye's last game. And Eddie Robinson giving thanks on this Thanksgiving Day, 1992. Joey Ellis, youngster who plays corner, sophomore out of Tyler, Texas, getting a breather on the sideline. 
Aggies have been a different football team in the second quarter compared to what they were in the first 15 minutes. This kick is on the ground. And it's going to be taken by Adams at the seven-yard line. So we are at halftime. The halftime show is coming up next, but right now, let's take this break. AMM 17 at Texas 3. We are scored at halftime here at Memorial Stadium in Austin with the Longhorns on the short end of this one. And Mike Gottfried, I'm going to put you in John and Makovic's place down in the locker room. What do you do here in the second half to combat Texas A&M? Ron, I'm going to defer to one of the greatest coaches of all time and a great man, Coach Tom Landry. Coach, what would you do if you were a Texas head coach? I tell you, you're in a spot when you're in this position. As you know, it, it's going to be pretty tough for them to come back. They're playing an excellent football team, and John is just starting to build this program. He's going to be excellent for the University of Texas. Tom, very quickly, when you played here with the Longhorns, things were a little different. You didn't just play on one side of the football, did you? That's right. We played both ways, but we had to earn our money in those days. <laughs> you golf game in good shape? Oh, bad. Terrible. All right. But I love it. I, I know that. That's what the five and six handicappers say. We'll be back with the halftime stats and more of the second half. But right now, let's take this break. 17 to 3, the Aggies on top. There, here are the highlights in the first half. Thomas with his first of a couple of touchdowns. And Thomas on the reverse for the second touchdown. Look at their running game, Ron. Greg Hill, 12 rushing attempts, 4.6 average. Thomas, six rushes, 7.2 yards and two touchdowns. Pete Gardera on the sideline warming up. A celebration of sorts here at halftime, Mike, as this is the 100th year of Texas football. You can see the 100th a patch on the shoulders of all the Texas football players. Uh, a fireworks display, and uh, boy, it, there's been a little bit of everything. Uh, tempers between the band members and uh, cheerleaders, what have you. Here are the numbers in the first half. a and 199 yards, and the bulk of that came in the second quarter. 145 total for the Texas Longhorns. Look at the average on first down. Well, that, that's the key, Ron. We talked, and you talked about first down. You have to get something on first down. And when you're averaging 0.7, you're always in long yardage situations against the great defense. But I think in the second half, Peter Gardier has to get the ball to Mike Adams and Lavelle Pinky on the outside. Mike, what's happening right here? This rivalry, as we said, the 99th meeting. We've had a couple of little flare-ups uh, between uh, the first, the Aggie band came through the Texas band as they marched on the field, the, the football team did, and there were words and pushes. Then the cheerleaders uh, came back on the field for Texas and went through part of the Aggie band. There was a, a little bit of an altercation, and now we have dueling bands that they won't get off the field. Both are down at the south end of the stadium. The well, next year, they can give them shoulder pads, and they can really be ready for contact. <laughs> And we also appreciate, as you said, not only one of the greatest coaches to have ever been a part of this game, but one of the nicest gentlemen to have been a part of it, uh, Tom Landry. As you look at John McAvick, and he paid uh, John McAvick quite a, a compliment about what he's done with this program. Anyone that's coached, say he, Tom Landry's a hero to all of us, and a great man, and along with Gil Brandt, Tex Schramm, formed one of the great pro franchises in the Dallas Cowboys, and they were great for college football. They were great, too college coaches. Bullock warming up on the far sideline. Benetulius will kick it off as the Longhorns had won the toss at the beginning of the game and deferred here to the second half. This is Adams from the seven. Big hole and he can fly. Loses the ball. It is out at the 36 yard line of A&M. Frazier was back as a safety guy. How many times do you see that where a 
a safety will drop the ball on the kickoff return, and then all of a sudden, the defensive players get out of their lanes and really start to bear down. He drops the football, has trouble picking it up. Now everybody ran past him. Now he's able to bring the ball back out. He fumbles it late, but it goes out of bounds. Great field position for Peter Gardner in the Texas offense. 56 yards on the return. Longhorns begin at the 37-yard line. in the middle of the blitz with that pass. Adams, and so far, it's been the Michael Adams show here in the second half. And let's go down to the sideline, Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, John McAvoy couldn't have orchestrated any better. He said, guys, in the second half, we've got to have one thing. Oh, offense. we got to score. We get the ball first. We have got to move the ball on the field in a hurry and get some points on the board. Let's check in on the other sideline with Adrian Carson. Adrian. Well, Jerry, confident but determined to Aggie locker room. They said, look, we've got to put more pressure on Gardere. However, they think they figured out their offensive formation. Except to expect to see more blitzing here in the second half. Slip screen comes to Duke. He can throw. That was a lateral, and he throws it back to Gardner. Blockers in front at the 10, 5, touchdown home. strong a lot of noise in this stadium on the three big plays for Texas she's ready to attempt the extra point you need big plays against the great defense great call by John McAvick Peter Gardner is going to throw the football to number 48 Derek Duke then get the ball back. Now watch the blocking assemble outside for Peter Gardier. Motion to get the extra blocker. There's the first pass to Derek Duke. He looks downfield, looks off the defense. Now back to Peter Gardier. Now watch the blocking set up. Peter Gardier in the end zone for the touchdown. Big play for the Texas offense. Reverse angle. Now watch Peter Gardier. Marcus Buckley, he chases the Derek Duke pass. Now Peter Gardier becomes a receiver on the other end of the throw for the touchdown. Good block by 78, Blake Brockermeyer. That is the first career reception by Pete Gardier. Tom Landry probably would have a, a call for that play. That <laughs> was probably in his cowboy playbook. Mickens, good look at him, one of the two deep men for Texas A&M. Mitchell is back there with him, Billy Mitchell. 17 to 10, a new score. Aggie lead cut to a single touchdown now. Well, we saw the same play with the SC, and they scored against UCLA last week. Throw back to the quarterback and let him run. Nickens. Brings it out to the 22-yard line. Back to Jerry Punch, another update from you. Guys, an injury could loom large for the Longhorn defense. I told you at halftime we were going to the locker room to take a look at Willie Mack Garza's ankle. Well, it turned out not to be his ankle. They x-rayed it. He has a broken fibula, the non-weight-bearing bone, about six inches below the left knee in his left leg. He is through for the year, guys. A tough break for the Longhorns. And he has had a, a very good career with the Texas Longhorns, and he'll be missed in the second half. Pitch to Hill. Turns the corner. Has five yards, counted off at seven. Anthony Curl defensively. Keep our eye on Van Malone, number eight, because he replaces Willie Mac Garza. Six foot one, 190 pound junior. So the pressure on the defense goes to Van Malone. Van Malone, the coaches give him the reputation, particularly this guy, says that Malone is 
is one of the hardest, toughest hitters that he has ever had at Texas. Pitch to Hill. Turns the corner. Hurdles one man and is going to be sandwiched at the 29-yard line. It's Norman Watkins who took his feet out from under him. Sometimes in a game, third down becomes so critical. And it's early in the third quarter in this third down situation to gain momentum. This Texas defense needs a stop for confidence purposes and to get the football back to their offense. is fullback open at the 50-yard line. First and 10, Texas A&M. The ball is lost. And the Longhorns have recovered. Van Malone. Well, we just talked about Van Malone, Ron. He has to come up with some plays in Willie Mack Garza's absence. A great play call by Bob Toledo to start this series. Corey pulling with a good play action fake. Everybody thinks it's going to be a run. Both receivers inside. Cliff Gross, number 33, is wide open. There's the strip by Van Malone. The recovery by Van Malone. Who stripped that ball? I will come back and look. Did you see, Ron, who stripped that? I'm going to have to come back and look at it one more time. Longhorns from the 48. Blitz in the middle. Atkinson is picked up, but he will be caught by the second wave, and that's Sam Adams, number 95, who makes the tackle. Gardere is sacked for the fourth time in the ball game by the Texas A&M defense. As you look at Malone. Now they're saying it's Winfred Tubbs, number 44, who strips the football, then Ban Malone with the recovery on the big play. Complete is he wanted his tight end Jason Burleson. Gardere took a pretty good shot as he delivered the football. 92 Eric England really leveled him. And now it's a third down for Texas. They need 11 yards to pick up the first down. John Makovic likes the dig route. The dig route is a route that will be run by either 80 Lavelle Pinkney or Michael Adams, 83, on an inside move where they go down past the first down marker and then break inside. Little counter tray. Face mask. Flag comes in late, and it's enough for the first down. With the tackle, I think it was England that he was running by who grabbed him with the face mask. Well, you talk about some good calls tonight. John Makovic goes to the counter play on third and long. Able to catch Texas A&M. There's the face mask on Eric England, number 92. Caught him in a defense, the 4-2 defense on the pass. Pass yards, to the run. First down. And made a big play. The Aggies looking for pass, Mike. Your point is well taken. And they come back with a counter tray and now tack on the five yards for the face masking. And the new line of scrimmage is the 38-yard line. Got to keep them guessing on defense. And John Makovic's doing a good job of that right now. over the middle incomplete and now here comes the flag atkinson looked as though that he was face masking and had never given ball recognition number 43 and i think that's the reason they marked him he never turned around toward the ball had his back to the football he just covered jason burles for number 13 the tight end on the crossing route Upper left side of your screen, Jason Atkinson, number 43 on pass coverage. 
Tight ends crossing. He's trying to keep him from coming across. He does not allow him to be able to get to the football. Five penalties. Yep, five for 35. Running play. Adrian Walker will be wrapped up. That's that's a good tackle by Jesse Cox as it looked as though he was going to have some good yardage. And Dr. Jerry Punch, what do you have for us? Guys, you can feel the momentum shifting here on the Texas sidelines. It's electric, the emotion. John Makovic convinced them at halftime they could come back and do it. They were 30 minutes away from the postseason bowl game. They absolutely believe they can win this ball game. Adrian, how about your side? Sorry, on the other side of the field, I am standing in the middle of a totally different team. I mean, these guys are in shock. Look at how Texas is running the ball against the number one defense in the Southwest Conference. Middle linebackers on the blitz. Gardier gets away. And fights his way forward inside the 25. Patrick Bates finally got him. I thought the youngster was dead in the water back at the 39-yard line. And the Aggies have a player shaken up there. Bob Davey keeps bringing this linebacker, Jason Atkinson, 43. The pressure's coming inside. Sam, Eric England, number 92, comes free. But Peter Gardier is able to get out. Patrick Bates finally makes the hit. Davey looking down for the sideline. It is England who is down with the injury, number 92. So let's take a break. 11.26 left third quarter. A&M 17 to 10. Took me about 25 years to see things the way I do now. And I think I'm still learning. One thing that a customer should get is the feeling that he is the most important person in the place. At your service. You open your place to people more with American Express. It's easier. <laughs> no, I couldn't really put it any other way. American Express is welcome to Harry's Bar and just about anywhere else Harry's been. Presenting the Ryobi Detail Sander. It gets into all those small, tight spaces where other sanders can't reach. And with special add-on accessories, it also prepares surfaces for painting. Scrapes paint and adhesive off glass, wood, and metal. Even polishes and buffs to a brilliant finish. In fact, you can use the Ryobi Detail Sander any place your imagination takes you. Just over 11 minutes left to play in this third quarter. Austin, Texas, the state capital of the Lone Star State. A little bit of a nip in the air tonight, but nobody feels it's supposed to be down below freezing. But it has been warm inside this stadium. Again, middle linebacker blitz. Texas picks it up. Ball is tipped. Ball tipped by Patrick Bates. Number 29 got a hand on it. Junior out of Galveston Ball High School. Six foot four. He's able to, he's got good height and with his hands able to get the ball, able to deflect it. His idol's Ronnie Lott and Steve Atwater. Toes the umpire to move out of his way and he moved right in front of him anyway. <laughs> but he's still able to get his hands on the football. He's mirroring the quarterback right in the lane of the pass. 42 yard field goal attempt by Scott Shreddy. Good pass, plenty of leg on this one, and he's good. <laughs> 17 to 13, our new score. Mike, frankly, in the first half, youngster would have had that exact kick of 42 yards. And I was surprised that Texas went for that fourth down back in the first half. Well, they passed up that chance, but I, I think he has so much respect, John Nakovic, for the Texas A&M defense, and he figures he's only going to have so many chances, and he just felt yeah. like he needed to go for the touchdown. Pete Gardner on the sideline, the senior out of Houston, Texas, talking with his uh, head coach. And Coach Makovic made a point about the new offense. This is the third offense that Pete Gardere has had here at Texas. And they've had to spend so much time with him this year. 
and then with an injury to his outstanding freshman quarterback uh, Shea Moritz that they're going to have to start all over again with someone as far as reps next year. All over, and that's the toughest thing because he's going to be able to sign 23 scholarship players and 40 over the next two years, so he can completely rebuild the scholarships. 17-13. Take it at the 25 and out to the 30, and the 35-yard line is... Detron Smith. Well, the Heisman Trophy race reaches the finish line on Saturday as the top three candidates play on ESPN. Four o'clock, Garrison Hurst leads Georgia against Georgia Tech. Then the college football scoreboard show follows with a recap of all the day's action at 7. And at 7.30, Mike, Adrian, and I will be in San Diego for the showdown between Gino Toretta and the top-ranked Hurricanes of Miami against Marshall Falk and the Aztecs of San Diego State. Falk did run today and is iffy but might play Saturday evening. That's the report we got just before game time. Haggis in the 35. Good heavens, what a hit right at the middle. That's Shane Rink, who stepped up and made the collision with emphasis. Hill is up and back to the huddle. You can see the emotion on this Texas football team. R.C. Slocum, you can see the worry on his face that his football team needs to reacquire the momentum in this game. The Aggies undefeated. No Texas A&M team has ever gone 12-0. In 1939, they went 11-0 and won a national championship. Pass lobbed out and knocked down by Van Malone. How many times do you see this, Mike, where a guy comes off the bench, has been shadowed by somebody else, and all of a sudden turns into a, a world gamer? My he... Wally Pipp story. <laughs> Van Malone, really, with a great break of the ball, almost picks this off, and I'll tell you, he's got six if he does. Boy, that was the pass was intended for Doug Carter. On the other side of the line, as far as what is at stake, uh, Texas hoping for a bid to the John Hancock Bowl in El Paso. Look for the tight end over the middle. Great shorts into the ball game. Looking for him. Looking, looking. Gets the pass away. And just over the outstretched arms of Tony Harrison. Texas A&M likes to go to the tight end in this situation. Watch the coverage on the tight end. Greg Short. As he comes off the ball. Linebacker stays with him it's almost double coverage on Greg Short forces him to throw the football outside Davis's kick this is a long driving spiral and Adams from the 20 return back into the sideline and he will take it to the 34 so there's a timeout 17 13 Aggies on top ESPN's presentation of college football is being brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, builders of fine automobiles since 1886. And by the Megamo family of beers, because some days are better than others. Now Van Malone on the sideline and uh, getting a little bit of a break after... Another good defensive series, replacing the injured Willie MacArthur, who has a broken bone in his leg. Running play, cuts it back into the middle. Ball is loose and taken away by Texas A&M. That's Solari with the football. Jesse Cox caused the fumble. Two fumbles by Texas tonight, both on their end of the field. Number 58, Lance Tackleman reaches in and is able to strip the football. And Curtis Jackson, Steve Solari on the recovery. Big play for the Texas A&M defense. Who's coming the ball game at tailback? Gets the handoff, gets to the outside, and Shane Rink will come up to meet him. Maybe it's a gain of one. Kevin Wattler, number 47, really made that play on defense. 
to force Rodney Thomas to the outside. Shane Rink, who made that stop, interestingly enough, he and uh, Sam Adams, who plays defensive tackle for Texas A&M, both played at Side Creek High School. In fact, they took their recruiting trip together here to Austin. One stayed, the other went to College Station. Rodney Thomas turns it upfield, still on his feet, and because of that second effort, he's going to have the first down. Mike, I'll tell you, tonight, he's the one making it happen, not Greg Hill. Well, you're right. Rodney Thomas, a strong runner. They will pick up this first down. They're turning the ball game over to the running game. Good stretch blocks, good block by the fullback. Rodney Thomas picks up the first down. Texas defense must hold and stop the running game of AM. Texas with the momentum and an opportunity with the football back, and they turn it over. Second miscue of the night. Right ahead with Thomas. Tries to bounce it outside, and he does. Going to be tripped up by Kevin Watler, and if Watler doesn't get him, he might have been headed for six points. Exactly right. Kevin Watler, number 47, with a shoestring tackle on Rodney Thomas, or he's off for more yardage. Now they're starting to pick back up the five yards on first down, Ron. But they're also doing it with a different tailback in the game, and I don't know if Hill is because of a couple of little injuries is slowed but thomas just he's fresh he's fresh and he's making bigger plays blitz is on in the middle thomas inside the 15 and he's all the way to the 11 yard line another a and m first down Watler defensively you're a texas fan you're looking for some kind of big play a holding call against texas a and m or Something big to try to stop this drive because they're just controlling the line of scrimmage. You see the nice block again by Doug Carter, 32. I mean, they're just rearing back and running the football right at the Texas defense. You can see Hill come back into the ball game. They're replacing Rodney Thomas. And Pulling wants a timeout. Only two seconds left on the 25-second clock. So let's take a break. 7.35 left in the third. Aggies by four. So Dodge is now offering fantastic savings on the all-new line of 93 cars. Like this redesigned Dodge Colt with prices starting as low as $89.93. Or how about a new Dodge Spirit with rebates up to $12.22 and option package discounts over $1,000. And even the sporty Dodge Shadow starting at $99.93. For saving satisfaction and service, it's Orlando Dodge, the easiest place in town to trade. Orlando Dodge, Highway 50 at Mercy Drive. Save money on tires and service. Just take action. Action Gator Tire Stores. Take action for savings of 30% off on all Goodyear tires. Action Gator Tire Stores. For brake relining, front or rear, just $24.95 for most cars. Action Gator Tire Stores. For an oil change with mobile premium oil, plus lube and filter, regularly $19.95, now only $12.95. Action Gator Tire Stores. For high-speed computerized wheel balance, only $3 each for most wheels. Save money. Take action. Action Gator Tire Stores. There's one near you. Have a ball this holiday season on ESPN. Two teams rich in college football tradition go head-to-head -head in an SEC battle. Arkansas plays host to LSU in a special edition on ESPN. Happy Thanksgiving from Austin, Texas. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, along with Adrian Karsten and Dr. Jerry Punch. John Makovic pacing on the sideline. His team with their back to their own end zone. It is a first and ten from the 11-yard line. Thomas back in the ball game at tailback. And they give it to him. Runs into his own man, then going to be corralled, and he'll still take it down to in the vicinity of the seven-yard line. As Lance Gunn is there to make the stop. Gunn, an interesting story in high school, didn't get to play a majority of his senior year because 
of a leg injury and there were a lot of people that were leery of him but uh, has come on to Texas and as I said was has been named to at least one All-American team and has done an outstanding job for the Texas Longhorns. Thomas again the lone setback. Ball was never snapped movement all over the place ball has been picked up. Procedure against the Aggies. Well, they needed a mistake. Here you look at Corey Pulling, number four, the freshman quarterback. He's not going to back away from anything here. Carter goes out, and you can see a short, number 86, coming into the lineup. The tight end who has been plagued with an injury to his ankle. Ten-yard line. Van Malone, number eight, really made that play from his uh, safety position to stop Rodney Thomas. You'd be satisfied if you're John McAvick to put him in a field goal situation where they only get three on this drive. Third down. The line to make is the one. Bullock straight in the pocket, locks it to the end zone, and incomplete. Cadmus with the cover on Brian Mitchell. Well, R.C. Slocum said this week that this secondary of Texas may be as talented as any secondary around. I think Alabama's got a great secondary. Colorado, it's a good play by number 21, Grady Cadmus. So now you want to block the field goal here for Texas to make a big play. Ventilius to attempt the field goal from the 18-yard line. Kick is good. So with 5.53 left in the third quarter, our new score, Texas A&M 20 and Texas 13. Sunday, join ESPN for the most comprehensive coverage of all the NFL action. At noon Eastern time, it's NFL game day with all the previews and features. Then at 7 o'clock Eastern, it's NFL prime time for the most comprehensive highlight show on television. And at 8 o'clock, it's NFL action as the L.A. Raiders take on the red-hot San Diego Chargers, winners of six of their last seven. It's a very crucial AFC West matchup all coming Sunday on ESPN. Bobby Ross. In his first year out of Georgia Tech, has done a good job with that football team, hasn't he? Junior Seau, Bert Grossman, some good defensive players for the Chargers. Bill Arnsbarger uh, is the defensive coordinator out there. Well, of course, just uh, coming from the University of Florida as the athletic director down there. Selling tickets, and now he's stopping people from getting yardage. <laughs> Mike Adams. He's a good coach. Yep, he is. Adams is back deep. Kick is going to send him about eight yards deep again. Well, what a weapon that is in the special teams. When you've got a guy who can consistently kick it into the end zone. And let's go to Adrian Carston for an update. Adrian, what well, do you right have? As the Aggie defense takes the field. Now, I talked earlier on about being able to read the formation. When they get into a blitzing situation now, the Aggie defense, watch number 94, Steve Solari. Because of his speed, Bob Davey wants to bring him up on the line, put him in a three-point stance as a fourth down rusher. They figure they can get more pressure on Gardere because they think he gets a little bit impatient back there. Okay, we'll keep an eye. Boy, the Aggies have, have blitzed it from about every position and angle that you can tonight. <laughs> Running play in the counter with Adrian Walker. Jesse Cox is there to make the tackle. A little counter play by Peter Gardier in the Texas offense. 
still believe Lavelle Pinkney or Mike Adams on the outside have to get the football to make some big plays for this Texas offense. Too tough to run against this AM defense. You gotta keep them honest, but the throws to the outside have to be the key. Walker, eight carries, 76 yards. Counter tray. They pull the guards, runs up into the middle, and runs into a wall of AM tacklers at the 25. England, along with Michael Hendricks. And that's going to bring up a third down for the Longhorn. They need to achieve the 30 yard line. Mike, very much akin to what happened in the first half. I think Texas needs very badly to get a first down right here because all of a sudden, just as in the first half, the momentum is slipping away from us. Slipping away, and the tough thing about third down is Ray Mickens comes on the field. Number 24, the extra defensive back. Makes it a little tougher to throw, but Peter Gardier can hit this pass and keep this first down alive. Shotgun formation. Pressure up the middle. Gardier hit from behind, and he's going to be tackled by Ray Mickens, the guy that Mike was just talking about. They brought Ray Mickens in as a extra defensive back and blitzed him from the outside. Bob Davey with an excellent call to stop the Texas offense. McClanahan to punt. And Frazier is the man back in the deep position again for AM. with the fair catch at the 32-yard line. 42 yards on the kick. He almost waited a little too long on that, Mike. The ball was uh, at a downward trajectory and coming to him quickly. Adrian Carsten, what do you have for us? But keeping track of how many times they've really been going after Gardner tonight, Ron. 16 times they've played blitz. They've gotten, what, total about six sacks here. 10 out of 16 times is not bad. I mean... Hats off to Bob Davey and that staff to be able to read the offensive side of Texas so darn well and then really hit them at their, uh, at their weakness. They have been selling out, so to speak. 3.57 left in the third. Aggies by seven. Andy Thomas takes it straight ahead. That's Anthony Curl, number 42, who is on him. Bob Davey talks to his defense on the sideline. Mike, one other thing we mentioned, we needed to mention about halftime, is the fact that in the 100-year celebration of Texas football, the Aggie band came back on the field, and they performed with the University of Texas while the fireworks display went off. And as somebody commented at halftime, that's the first time in 99 years they've ever done anything together. <laughs> Kevin Wadler has made some big plays in the second half. Maybe not as big as this one. Counter play to number 20, Rodney Thomas, but Kevin Wadler with his speed chases him down from the backside for a big loss. So it's going to be third down, and AM needs 10 yards. complete at the 45-yard line. Ryan Matthews got the defensive back turned around, and he had position on it. And you get man coverage. Ryan Matthews, number 81, adjusts to the football. Joey Ellis, number 27, just loses touch with the receiver. See the adjustment by Ryan Matthews. He's able to come back outside. The reaction by the freshman quarterback. He makes him a tougher offense to defend. No doubt about it. You see his numbers tonight, 143 yards, as Hill joins Thomas in the backfield. And the play clock down to two seconds, and Pullig will have to call a timeout. Well, college basketball action comes your way tomorrow night from Madison Square Garden. And this looks like late season stuff. Number four, Indiana, against number six, Seton Hall at the NIT final, 7.30 Eastern time. That game will feature winner of the 
Well, that's copy that didn't need to be there. <laughs> Indiana against Seton Hall. Uh, that's not the last time that you're going to see those guys, I think, in a in a late season tiff. Do you? No. Bobby Knight's from Oroville, Ohio. He's my mom's favorite basketball coach. On that subject, John McVick was telling me that his mom lives in Barberton, Ohio, and always calls and says, are they treating you all right down there, the fans? Treating you okay as she sees some coaching changes around the country? So we'll tell her that she, he's doing fine here at Texas. <laughs> uh, Dr. Jerry Punch, let's go to you. You take a look at Pat Watson, the Texas offensive line coach. He has been working diligently with his senior offensive line, concerned primarily about one thing. Sneaking linebackers in the guard center gap and have a difficult time controlling us. They're going to try to run more trap and counter trade. Next time, hopefully they'll be able to trap those linebackers inside and make the running game work. Back up there. Thanks, Jerry. What they need right now is a stop, though. Option play and pull it. Going to get hammered. Shane Rink, number 73, along with Stoney Clark in the tackle. By the way, until that running play right there, which picked up one yard, Hill and Thomas are responsible for 136 of A&M's 145 rushing yards tonight. Give credit to old number 32, Doug Carter, for leading the way, plus that offensive line with some good blocking. But this young man, Doug Carter, really is a solid fullback in the I formation. You see Texas creeping up on the outside, and here they come. Pulling, stepping up over the middle. It is caught. Mitchell. Wow, what a grab. Winford Tubbs was in pretty good position, but just underplayed the throw. Number 44. See him inside. Van Malone, number eight, got caught inside. And then the good catch by Brian Mitchell, where he stretches out to bring the football in. New line of scrimmage, the 19-yard line. 140 and counting. Aggies by seven. This is Greg Hill. Turns the corner, but have five, breaks it open at the 10-yard line, and that is very close to another AM first down. Van Malone got a hand on it. Ron, I can't say enough about Doug Carter, number 32. The reason is he makes adjustment at the fullback position. He makes a block on this play to spring the right side of your screen. Doug Carter, he always sees things. There's the block on number 42, Anthony Curl with the adjustment that springs Greg Hill for the good game. And they're bringing the change from the sideline. Senior from Dallas, Texas, Doug Carter. See, just short is the line of scrimmage now inside the 10-yard line. Adrian, what do you have for us? Well, I'm looking over the shoulders of Coach Slope and Bob Polito. Uh, they think they found a weakness here, Ron, in the defensive line of Texas. Full passion play, they're taking the fullback right up the middle, but it looks like he can get six out of this play. Ben Carter, right up the middle, fights his way inside the five, and he's down to the four. And now here comes a late flag in as Harrison was blocking against Cavanis, and a headgear went flying in the air, and then a flag came flying. AM line offensive line watch the push against the defensive line of Texas come off the ball Doug Carter picking his hole and I think Adrian said he could get six I think he got five and a half real close to that six of Adrian Carson first down and goal Texas AM Carter again nothing there Victor Frazier number seven who had just come in the ball game replacing Grady Cavanis at cornerback is responsible for the stop they need a big play down here. 
trailing 20 to 13 is the third quarter, 41 seconds to go. Pat Watson, Gary Darnell beside him, former Notre Dame assistant. Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator. Touchdown AM. Rodney Thomas, his third. to attempt the extra point. It is perfect. And a and back on top by 14 points with 20 seconds left in the third. Let's, let's follow the block of number 32, Doug Carter. To the tailback, Rodney Thomas. You just follow your fullback inside. There's the block that springs him for the touchdown. John Ellisor, number 51 with a very good block on the play as well. As you see Thomas into the end zone, and it's AM 27 and Texas 13. When you talk about players in the game tonight, I'm going to tell you, unless something changes, my selection is number 32, Doug Carter. Now, Rodney Thomas has the touchdowns and the yardage, and number 32 has just done just a great job of lead blocking. Saturday night, we will be in San Diego, California. Number one Miami against the Aztecs. And the report late this afternoon is that Marshall Falk put on pads even and tried to work a little bit today. Kind of iffy, but uh, we may see. Adams from the three. Adams all the way out to the 33. Here's the scoring drive for Texas A&M. Nine plays, 68 yards. You see the distribution, only two passes. But the one huge catch by Mitchell, where he made the diving reception, was the difference in the drive. Thomas with his third touchdown of the evening. Another impressive performance by the freshman quarterback, Corey Pulley. who is holding on to it. And that is the end of the third quarter. So there's a timeout here in Austin. A&M 27, Texas 13. We'll be back with the final 15 minutes after this. I can't tell you how it feels when you're way out there on your own tracking the bad guys. How it feels leading a skilled team that's the eyes and ears of the whole outfit. When all your training is coming alive. But finding those tanks and telling the air cavalry right where to hit them. I can tell you exactly how that feels. from Roden Track says the 190E 2.3's understated elegance never seems to go out of style. A quote from Car and Driver says the 190E 2.6 feels as solid as concrete. And a quote from Automobile Magazine says the three-pointed star shines as brightly as ever. But none of these compare to the different quotes you can now get from your local Mercedes-Benz dealers. Now available with affordable monthly lease payments. Citizen, 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 elegant, citizen, citizen, elegant. Oh, his 
season, Pizza Hut is giving you something to celebrate. The Holiday Stuffer, a pizza loaded with 10 toppings and three kinds of cheese. Try one medium for a special price of $9.99. Any second pizza is half its menu price. But hurry, because when the season ends, so does the deal. Panasonic presents a unique and highly evolved smooth operator. The new smooth operator 2 with float control is the only razor to unite the comfort of twin independent floating heads with the closeness of a warm, wet shave. Don't try this with any plugged-in razor. The new smooth operator wet-dry razors from Panasonic. Smoother than you ever thought you would be. Some of the Longhorn faithful on hand in this Turkey Day meeting, 1992. The 99th time that these two schools have gotten together on the gridiron. Tackleman came on across, made uh, contact with Turk McDonald, and it's going to cost AM five yards. But it's also going to move the sticks. Mike, since back in the first quarter, Lavelle Pinckney was open, a ball that hit him on the hands just a little bit too far that would have gone for six if he holds on. Or he's just been silenced. We we haven't seen him or heard from him since then. You're right, Ron. If they're going to win this football game, they have to get the ball to him and Mike Adams on the outside because too tough inside for a steady diet. Pressure from the middle and also the outside. The middle screen is Adams and close to the first down at the 43. I'll tell you what, with what the Aggies have hit, it looks, it looks like a jailbreak up there. Well, the Texas fans are going to enjoy Mike Adams for the rest of his career because he's such a game-breaker. Marcus Buckley up inside, good block for Peter Gardier, able to get the screen off, a good call versus the screen with Marcus Buckley coming from the outside. But Michael Adams is the kind of player that every time he touches the ball, he's very capable of the big play. Pitch to Adrian Walker. Turns the corner. Has the first down. A one flag, two flags. Frazier defensively. <laughs> Holding Texas. See the patience of John Makovic. He's been here before. He knows he's got to build this thing, and he's uh, he's going to recruit. He knows what he has to do here. He has a plan of success. Well, there's a big one right there. Would have been a first down, and a penalty now is going to be spotted. The ball will be at the 46-yard line, so it's second down and about 11 yards. Still got to be patient with his play calling also because you can't get in situations where Buckley and Solari and Atkinson can just pin their ears back and blitz on you. Everybody's coming on this one. And he goes up, going for Adams, incomplete. Glenn was trying to cover, and I think had that ball been a little bit closer to him, handkerchief might have come out, but it was just well over his head. Just didn't get enough air on the ball. They were challenging Aaron Glenn again with Mike Adams. They had what they wanted, Ron. You got a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And Mike Adams with good speed. He's got him beat. Now he's holding on a little bit, but the ball's just too far over his head. Fourth quarter, 14.08 left to play. I'd come right back at him again. I'd come right Bridget, back at Aaron play. Glenn. Same thing where I try to get somebody behind him. Aggies 27 to 13, and they go with the run. Bill Brown caught from behind 94 Steve Solari will stop him from getting the first down and it's going to be fourth down Texas at 82 and a half yards. This is a tough decision for John McAvick. He's made it unless he has a fake punt on here. 
Looks like he'll turn the ball back over to AM. Frazier goes back deep for the Aggies as you look at McClanahan. I think this is a good choice by John Makovic. Their catch is signal four and is made at the 13-yard line. We'll take a break. 13-27 left in this one. Who has the advanced training and equipment to take care of the advanced technology on your GM vehicle? You know who. Mr. Goodwrench. The smart choice for your smart car. Thank you. To all of you attracted by Buick's reputation for quality, but who think a new Buick is beyond your means, may I make the following suggestion? Go see the new Buick Skylark Custom. It is every bit a quality Buick. And as the most affordable Buick for 1993, it makes Buick quality more attractive than ever. a very sophisticated system you're probably better off taking it to the gm dealership we haven't got that kind of equipment here best bets the dealership pretty tricky stuff out of our league sorry try the dealership the dealership the gm dealership espn's presentation of college football is being brought to you by buick and your local buick dealers remember buick the new symbol of quality in america and by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, it's like buying time. We are back in Austin, Texas on this uh, Turkey Day affair. 27 to 13, uh, Texas A&M leading. In the past, just a moment ago by Gardere, a couple of times tonight, That's that's been the story, just a little bit too long on a receiver who has his man beaten. Over the draw play. Shane Rink is the man who makes the tackle on Greg Hill. Back to Jerry Punch, a report from you. Well, he may be hurt, guys, but he's back on the sidelines on crutches, watching his teammates and trying to cheer the Longhorns along. We're talking about the senior free safety, Willie Mac Garza, standing here with a broken left leg, but still in this ball game here tonight. A big rivalry, not a broken leg, going to keep him away from watching this one finish. That says everything about this rivalry, I think. Hill again will be grabbed by the ankle. Winfred Tubbs this time. We have watched Texas A&M three times this year, Ron. We've watched tape on them. And the thing that's impressive about them is they wear you down. They wear teams down on offense. They wear them down on defense. And the fourth quarter is usually theirs. They just control the ball game until they wear you to a point where they take it over. Third down, and they need the 23, Mike, to keep this drive alive. Pass is caught by Matthews. Knocked out of bounds over the 47-yard line. Adrian Carston, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, as Coach just said, one of the last things that actually Bob uh, Toledo and R.C. Slocum said as they were taking the field was, hey, this is our half. This is the second half. Well, look at this information. Throughout the year, the second half of the game has been their better half. Outscoring their opponents in the first half, 116-99. to 99. But look at the second half, 199-56. to 56. That's almost twice as many points in the third and fourth quarter. 29 yards on that pass play there, which backs up your point, Mike, as far as how they do wear the opponent down. Greg Hill slipping and sliding, takes it to the 50. Ron, here's the impressive thing about Texas A&M. 
only will lose two seniors on offense, and two seniors on defense, that's right. and a punter. So you're talking about a very young football team here. They're only going to sign eight to ten players this year. And Texas will sign 20. That means a lot of schools will be coming in this state where great high school football, great high school coaching will have a lot of prospects. Hill. Tubbs knocks him down hard at the 40, but not before. He has a gain of 12 yards in the play. And a first down, Texas A&M. Just keep running the football at you. Just keep making plays. R.C. Slocum's team just wears you down. There's talking to Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, in complete control right now. this time. The big pullback tries to hammer his way. That's Anthony Curl, though, that comes up and puts a good stick on him, and Todd Hunt also helping on the uh, the tackle. And look at the improvement, Mike, as far as R.C. Slocum's stint uh, at uh, Texas A&A. Well, they have improved, and you have to think they're still in the national picture here to win the national championship. A lot of things can still happen, but when you're 11-0, and could be 12 and all you've done all you can, you're asked to do you've won every game to, what else you know i know there's some people that uh, have talked about passing the by on the rankings but uh hit behind the line of scrimmage and that's uh, anthony curl who leads the attack also uh, chris rapp number 63 and uh, dwayne bossing and but it's like you said you know what else can you do you got those that many teams on your schedule and it, it appears that with uh, just over 10 minutes to play. They lead by 14 here that they are on their way to make it 12. And, and I'm impressed most with the young players. You win with young players. Usually it takes senior leadership to pull you through, but this is a young team. R.C. Slope and the staff have done a great job with this team. Pressure from the backside. Pearl with the hit. Pass is overthrown. And Texas will get the football back. Mitchell is who he wanted. I'd say if uh, Venatulis, this would be about a 55-yard attempt. Now, they're going to send uh, David Davis on. They'll punt it away. I think the way their defense is playing, unless they try something uh, with a trick play here, you know, you have to pin Texas in the hole and just let your defense play. And you, you don't want to give Adams an opportunity to return it. Signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 10-yard line. So there's a timeout on the field. 27-13, Texas A&M. We'll be right back. Over the years, I've made a lot of trips back and forth to Vegas. How's it going this trip, Todd? The odometer was broken for over 50,000 miles, so I say we've got 300,000 miles on this car. Hi, George. I've had a longer relationship with this car than I've had with any woman. Hi, George. How are you? This beauty's a living example of what can be done with proper maintenance and AC Delta. Hi, George. AC Delco Parts, it's like buying time. Why is the Sabre the best-selling full-size sedan in America? It's simple. Because it's built like a Buick. And Buick has become an enormous symbol of quality in America. What'll it be, Phyllis? Make it a Bud Light. Sorry. This is the last one. Well, I think I've been. Well, I don't that one. What do you want to give? Four, and I'm a two, and a ten, give me ten, and a twenty big, give me twenty now, thirty, give me thirty now, forty big, give me forty now, fifty, give me fifty now, sixty big, give me sixty now, seventy, give me seventy now. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Bud, Bud Light, Light, please. Sorry, boys. This is the last one. Good look at Marcus Buckley, the All-American linebacker for the Texas Aggies. Situation: the Longhorns are 90 yards away. Kenny Neal has come at a wide receiver, number six, at the bottom of your screen. In the counterplay, Adrian Walker.
9.36 on the clock, Ron, you have to throw the football. Got to also be very conscious of where Buckley is. But you have to get the ball in the wide receiver's hands. And as we mentioned, they said they wanted to get the ball as many times as they could to Mike Adams. Offside call on a &M. So it'll be first down to five as they move it to the 20-yard line. But as I mentioned a moment ago, not only have they not been able to get it to Adams that many times, I am surprised that Pinckney has just been a non-entity in, uh, in the ball game. And you'd think at 6'5", 222, you'd want to pick on a corner who was not even six feet tall. Gardere deep over the middle, and Patrick Bates came from Interstate 35 to <laughs> knock that one down. Good heavens. Transfer from UCLA, just, you're right, he broke on the football with his left hand made the deflection. Peter Gardier knows number nine is breathing down his back. Steps up into the pocket. You see the double team on Marcus Buckley. Patrick Bates with his left hand deflects that football. the head down boy you can hear the contact even over the roar of this huge crowd Sam Adams the first man along with Eric England that's what Marcus Buckley makes you do you have to run to him just to keep him honest on that second down play he's revved up right now he knows this is his kind of game at this point with 848 he knows they have to throw the football now he's gearing up he's got some gas in his tank ready to go at the line of scrimmage and that was Jason Atkinson who got a hand on it. It'll be fourth down. They haven't been able to pick up Jason Atkinson all evening on the blitz inside. They're so conscious of the outside with Buckley and Solari that Atkinson is one on one inside. They just have not blocked him. Good scheme by Bob Davey tonight using Jason Atkinson more. This half, Pete Gardier is only two of seven throws. Frazier from the 34. Runs into his own man, then cuts toward the boundary, and he'll have it out across the 40-yard line. 46 yards and a kick. Well, National Hockey League action comes your way tomorrow afternoon on ESPN with the Hartford Whalers take on the red-hot Boston Bruins, led by four-time Norris Trophy winner Ray Bork. That's tomorrow afternoon, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Gary Thorne and Jim Schoenfeld calling the action. Waiters and the Bruins. You're a big uh, hockey fan, aren't you? <laughs> what, are you yeah, huh? I'm a real big hockey fan. I don't know what ends up. Hey? <laughs> Surprises me, Michael. I thought you would be. This is going to become one with it on ESPN now. <laughs> Cliff Gross. Is in a fullback. He gets the carry. Anthony Curl is holding on to him on the tackle. Talked to R.C. Slocum down in, in his locker room just prior to this ball game, and he said because of the rivalry, and he said because also of the athleticism of Texas, he said, you know, you run into those football teams that put together a ball game where they don't make any errors, and he said, believe me, they're good enough to beat you. And he was concerned about this one tonight. But all of a sudden, with that last stop and the clock about to go under seven minutes to play, a 14-point lead, the Aggies getting ever closer to something their school has never done, and that is have a 12-0 and season. And the shame of the thing, Ron, is that it looks like they won't have a chance for the national title because if Miami beats San Diego State, Alabama beats Florida, and they meet, then Texas A&M's the odd man out with an undefeated season, 12-0. That's another argument for a college football playoff. You can't do any better than 12-0. No, no, you can't. John Makovic trying to see if maybe there is a rabbit in the hat someplace, but the, the time is, is getting short. 
Hill. Wow, what a double team. One thing that will not happen, even when this thing goes double zeros up there on the clock, these two clubs will just keep hitting each other and keep hitting each other. Because, uh, you know, what we talked about last week with UCLA and USC, all of these kids come from either San Antonio or Dallas or Houston, and they were either recruited together, played against each other, or with each other. Uh, as we talk about Rink and also Sam Adams coming from the same high school, but yet going to the two different schools. Uh, they know each other well. You don't have to do uh, fire and brimstone speeches to get them fired up for these. You're right. The war now becomes to the recruiting because Texas has a chance to go out to sign 2023 20, players. Texas A&M, of course, will get ready for their bowl game, but John Makovic now gets a chance to battle on the war front of the recruiting trails, and he'll add some players here, and he'll get this program going. I'll tell you, he's a solid football coach. You know what, Mike? The one thing that, that's going to have to change to help this conference, so we talk about it every week. We see more and more and more Texas kids on every roster of every team, every game we do. What we're seeing is sprinkling, but now there seems to be a great number. This is Hill. And he's going to be hit by Malone and stopped just shy of the 45-yard line. And let's get you caught up on what has happened in case you went away or joined us late. Hill and Thomas, 167 yards rushing. Thomas with three touchdowns. And look at the next line. 16 blitz, four sacks, and six pressures. And for Pete Gardere, 9 of 23, 96 yards, and two fumbles by the Longhorns. Total of six points. One was a real momentum breaker here in the second half. To me, that was the play of the game. Thomas breaks off the tackle, puts a head down. He's still on his feet and is finally going to be stopped at the 43-yard line. Gunn and Van Malone on the stop. Van Malone really came up and delivered a blow to Rodney Thomas, knocked him out of bounds. Lance Gunn had a hold of him. You're a senior on the Texas team. It's a disappointing feeling. You're going out without a bowl game, but but you have the uh, respect of the coaching staff, and you're the start of a new regime. So you're the chance to get it turned around. Up to one. He's going to be hit and wrecked by Bo Robinson. And Bo probably looked down at him and said, you hit me in the face earlier, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> now I just hit you in the side of the head. So with the sack, David Davis will come on to kick it away for Texas A&M. Texas is going to take a timeout, Ron. And let's take a break. 4.53 left in the game. Aggies by 14. Michael Adams back in uh, punt return position. 27 to 13, our count. David Davis. Have to kick it away. Mike in the last kick. Uh, Texas didn't get the same push this time. Is that catch made on the run by Adams? And we asked Coach uh, Slocum whether he felt his team had earned the right to play for the national championship. Uh, if Alabama remains undefeated, they're ranked number two, then certainly they deserve a shot at Miami. But uh, if they were to falter along the way, then I hope us being 12 and 0, if we if we were successful in playing Texas, and we're 12 and 0, I hope we'd get the chance, and the pollsters would vote to set up a national championship game between two undefeated teams. Well, like you said, Mike, you can't argue with that logic. <laughs> you just can't. Gardeer gathers it in, gives it to Phil Brown, and he will have 12, now 13 yards. Dr. Jerry Punch. And guys, John McAvick is pulling in all the stops. No huddle from here on out. It's just five minutes to go, and we still got a shot. He is unbelievable here on the sidelines. What a motivator. He believes they still can pull it out, guys. Oh, well, he's got four minutes and 37 seconds. Over the middle, as it complete at the 42. Brown uh, out of the backfield. The pro coaching background of John Mack. Of course, he's always been a passing coach at Wake Forest. He took them to a successful season. The Chiefs, Illinois, he's always thrown the ball and thrown it well. 
zings it. Has it complete. That's Adams down at the 42-yard line. Got a &M back on their heels a little bit on defense now with the no huddle. Sure, Bob Davey will crank up a blitz here in a couple seconds. Keeps the substitutes off the field for a &M. They can't bring the extra DBs in. Blitz again. Pump's going to go long. Looking for Duke just over his hands. <laughs> Pete Gardere would like to have three passes back in his hand and throw them again from tonight's ballgame where he has had receivers beyond defensive back. Oh, you're right, but I don't think that was his fault. Derek Duke kind of gave up on the play a little bit too soon. Peter Gardier wanted Derek Duke to take off, but he kind of stopped and then tried to pick it back up, and he's just a few feet short of catching that football. Corner blitz, and they go with a run, and Brown will have nothing. That's Tackleman, number 58 who steps up and makes the hit just as the handoff was made. Marcus Buckley also. Bob Davey brought the blitz to the fine defensive coordinator who was involved in the Baylor job this week and withdrew his name, brought Ray Mickens, number 24, on a blitz. So Texas A&M has called a timeout, and we'll take it with them. 335 left to play. Aggies by 14. Goodbye, old Regal. Hello, new Regal. The 1993 Buick Regal sedan. This story isn't unusual. There's a real love affair between Buick owners and their automobiles. And the latest J.D. Power & Associates initial quality study ranks Regal Sedan as the best car in its price class. The great American love story belongs to Buick. She's an 83 with over 140,000 on-road and off-road miles. I must be in and out of it 150 times a day. It's a wonder the doors don't fall off. Only trouble was when the pig charged and caved in my door. I only use AC Delco. Cheaper parts can cost you a powerful lot. Of course, so can pigs. AC Delco parts. It's like buying time. From precious metals to fashion colors, Cross writing instruments are the perfect gift for everyone on your Christmas list. From your favorite uncle to the kid who delivers the paper. And if you buy any four Cross pens or pencils before December 31st, We'll send you a medalist ballpoint pen as our gift, which could come in handy. Cross, the perfect gift since 1846. John Makovic talking with Gary Darnell on the sideline. One of the things, Mike, that has been huge for Texas in the second half, they're only one of five on third down conversions. Only four of 14 for the ball game. Safety blitz. Lops it, Pinkney just overthrown. Ray Mickens again, number 24, brought the extra DB in and they blitzed him from the wide side of the field to pressure Peter Gardier. Down to one last play for the Texas offense. Stopped the clock with 3.31 left. Safety blitz again. Puts air onto this one, heading for the end zone, and it is caught by Adams inside the 15. And Adams got away with a push on that one. He you see the Aggie defensive back is going nuts. That's Derek Frazier. Well, 83 is going to push 23, and he got away with it. You're exactly right, Ron. He was able to adjust to the football. Michael Adams on the outside. Texas is still alive with 323 on the clock. 34 yards in the pass play. Look in pass. It is intercepted. Aaron Glenn. Touchdown, Texas.
Texas A&M. 95 yards on the return. comes down back at the 35. They got celebrating by Texas A&M. Too many men on the field. Well, the no. What an accomplishment for the Texas A&M football team. Now, for those who uh, have talked up getting them passed by in the polls, uh, I have a feeling that the that the Aggies would just say that you know, if you think they are a cream puff, put them on the schedule and, and see if they are. Well, they beat a good Stanford team to start the season. Comes a call by Joe Thomas. Personal foul on the scoring team. We'll penalize on the kickoff. You know, that was not for a celebration. Adams, the wide receiver for Texas, stayed on the field for a very long time, having words with Frazier, and I think that, that an altercation must have just, because the flag came from the other end of the field, Mike, and that possibly was it. Kick is perfect. 3-0-4, left in this one. And let's take one more look at the interception. Aaron Glenn, number 31. Here's the blitz by Atkinson inside. Just threw it behind his intended receiver. Kenny Neal, number six. Then Aaron Glenn is off to the races. Patrick Bates, 29, trying to take care of the last Texas hope to stop Aaron Glenn. The only teams to win 12 regular season games. Look at them. A&M in 92. BYU in 84. Nebraska twice, 83 and 71. And SMU in 1935. And as we mentioned, the Aggies had a perfect year in 1939. They won a national championship then. But no A&M team, as you could look at that record right there and see, no A&M team has ever won 12 before. And as we mentioned, a very young football team run. They lose two on offense and two on defense. R.C. Slocum has done it quietly, too. A gentleman. Yeah, it's, you know, and the, the thing is, when you look at his winning percentage of over 80%. That would be a kick around at the 30-yard line. That's Van Malone who picks it up. And Dr. Jerry Punch, what do you have for us? Guys, a minute ago, one of the Texas managers came over to me and said, you know, I don't know which is worse, a broken fibula or a broken heart. This really hurts. This is a big rivalry here. Awfully, awfully low here on the Longhorn sidelines. Let's check in over to Texas A&M with Adrian Carsford. Adrian? Well, Jerry, I've just had this rivalry defined for me as I stand in between a shouting match and they're also throwing some cups and ice and everything else between the A&M bench and some of the Longhorn fans. But the champ down here is 12 and 0 for the 12th man. There are 20,000 towels out from over from College Station. This really puts a period on the first time that the Aggies have gone 12 and 0 for the 12th man. Pete Gardier gets his pass away. It just got rid of it. or the interception by Glenn. It's the third longest interception return in Texas a in history. 95 yards is what he's been given officially. You know, John Makovic, as you look at him in the first year of losing a rivalry game, I'll tell you exactly what he's thinking about because right now his thoughts are in. You go ahead and enjoy yourself over that other sideline because I'm going to go recruit myself 2023 20, football players, and I'll see you here again next year. I'll see you down at College Station. But I'm not going to rest till I get you. 
and that's exactly what's going to motivate him through recruiting. You can lose this game, and you can watch the celebration, but you know in your heart you're going to go get more players, and you're going to eventually get this bunch. And for Buckley, Marcus is out of the ball game and getting a well-deserved rest. He was shaken up a little bit uh, after that interception return, but uh, he ends it up with a very positive note at Texas A&M Senior out of Fort Worth, Eastern Hills. Yeah. there will be sacked way back at the 25-yard line. Willie Mac Garza, the hurt in his eyes, the Texas A&M fans, and R.C. Slocum's thoughts now go to his bowl game. Says, who, who are we going to play? Who are they going to play, Ron? In the Cotton Bowl? Yep. I, Mike, <laughs> the, the way her Hawk Rock, who are you going to get there? The pass is complete. It's McLemore, steps out of bounds. You know, it is impossible to tell the way they keep bantering this thing back and forth with the poles and everything else. Is it going to be Notre Dame or is it going to be Florida State? One of those two, I would assume. Well, tonight's Wrangler player of the game from Texas A&M is number 20, Rodney Thomas, and he lives in the shadow, literally, of Greg Hill because Greg starts and then Thomas comes off the bench. But tonight, three touchdowns for him and a really outstanding effort and I thought he got an A&M team going a couple of times when momentum had gone over to the to the burnt orange of Texas so our congratulations to him for his great effort in this ball game tonight Doug Carter with the carry Winfred Tubbs is there defensively Pete Gardier will leave the 40 acres with uh, a lot of records in his pocket of course, the records, something he really doesn't care about tonight. He would love more than anything to have closed out his senior year with a victory over Texas A&M, but it's not going to happen. 34-13, Aggies with the 21-point bulge. That's Gross, who was lined up at tailback that time. They had both fullbacks in the game, Carter and Gross. Whoever AM gets in the ball game, I'll, I'll simply say, and I, I, th I would I'd love to get your, your input on it as well, Mike. We saw AM in the first game of the year. We saw him a couple of weeks ago or three weeks ago against Houston. Uh, but the the improvement and the steady improvement with Pullig at quarterback, they're they're a new handful as far as what they can do offensively, don't you think? Ron, this is a good football team that I think could play with Miami, they could play with Alabama. I think they should be ranked number three in the country. And they're undefeated. They've done everything everybody's asked of them. And they certainly should have a shot at the national championship. And I think it's a shame that they probably will not get that opportunity. Let if, me my, say, if Miami beats San Diego State, Alabama beats Florida, then yeah, they're going to meet. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Alabama has the defensive backs to match up with Miami. And that'll be a good matchup. But this team is really being overlooked. Turk McDonald, the offensive center for the Longhorns, and a hug for his line mate, so to speak, Alan Luther. A couple of seniors. That, uh, you talk about good things that come out of football, there's good things. Team concept. You hear about people, the bad things sometimes. Let me tell you something, the good sure outweighs the bad. College football, college basketball, college sports. A lot of great things happening. Carter will handle this inside the 35-yard line. Adrian Carson is kind of a R.C. Slocum look-alike. You better watch for the water bucket.
Well, the final score, Texas A&M 34, Texas 13. Stay tuned for SportsCenter, which follows next. And now for Mike Gottfried, Adrian Karsten, and Dr. Jerry Punch, I'm Ron Franklin saying happy Thanksgiving and good night from Austin, Texas.